This video is sponsored by PokedownStore.com, the best place for you to get yourself some TCGO code cards. Looking for that specific code card to complete your deck or just to open up some packs, they have it all. From Darkness of Blaze, Champions Pads, you name it. Look at the huge variety that they offer. Also, this video is sponsored by CardMarket.com. This is a platform I personally use every day. And this is for European players to purchase and sell cards all across Europe. And uh, they have lots of good stuff on here. You can uh, actually uh, open up an account and start selling yourself or buy a fantastic amount of products from people all across Europe. So definitely check out both of my sponsors, PotownStore.com as well as CardMarket. And as a little addition, if you go to Potown Store, you can use the coupon code ZAPDOSTCG for 5 percent of your next order so definitely do so you'll help me out a ton a new list that sounds sick some new decks to win with what is good let's admit that adp is still lit we also have some new contenders sent to scorch makes you surrender return as if you're a big or mute to if you like to use welder We can also go real old school Think a ROM and greens are still rule Leap battle decks to give you fuel To start the competitive scene duel The Sage UI will make you cry If you don't have an answer you'll scream why It's an easy deck to come by So figure out what else is great to try Yes! Episode whatever Top 10 best decks Team up all the way up to champion spec Best decks for the players cup Number 2 What's up YouTube, it's Zapdogs TCG here and welcome back to another TCG video on my channel. For the people that are new, uh, I give you competitive TCG information every single week. So uh, that's gonna be like uh, uh, roughly five videos per week. So you guys know what to expect in the metagame. Today, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 best decks in the format right now. Ideal if you're uh, having tickets left for the Player Cup too. So if you're still grinding that off, these are the top 10 best decks for you. Also, if you want to have uh, a little bit of an update about the meta right now if you've been out because there are no real life tournaments going around this is an ideal video for you so right now there has been a rotation going around there is of course going to be team up all the way to champions pad in this video so we're gonna be talking about the top 10 best decks first of all some honorable mentions that didn't make the list Lapras VMAX with Frost Mod, very cute deck uh, it can still hit hard if you can get enough water energies onto your Lapras VMAX unfortunately I have not put that onto the list because it hasn't seen too much tournament success. We're gonna be basing this list off of tournament success. We have online tournaments, we have the uh, yeah the Atlas Minis, we have the Chill Series, the Hexer TCG, the weekly Limitless TCG tournaments. So we're gonna be basing the uh, content out of that. So uh, all the other decks that didn't make the list is Mad Party. I do love the fact that Mad Party is one prize deck. I'm a big fan of Mad Party. But unfortunately, didn't make the top 10. Uh, counter Welder Boxes in the form of like Torkoal V, Rhyperior List. Also, haven't seen too many of these out there. It could win a tournament entirely, I know. But because they don't show up in huge numbers, that means they are not uh, yeah, classified as uh, a top 10 best deck. Uh, the last one on the list is Excadrill Control, also didn't make the list. I know Icaterpy is a big fan of stall archetypes, uh, just like Sander Wojcik from the Netherlands. But uh, they are very hard decks to play with and people uh, probably will not be able to uh, get to that kind of a level with stall uh, because it's very hard to play with. So without further ado, let's get ourselves to the top 10 best decks right now. So uh, yeah, the first one on the list is going to be none other than Greensart. Yeah, I know Greensart is still a thing. Uh, I, I've seen it a lot at the World Championships uh, when I was playing a counter box deck uh, with Frazlas, uh, believe it or not. This time around, it's back. You're going to be uh, focusing more on Charizard and Bright in GX instead of relying on Reshizard. There's still one Reshizard in here because let's face it, if you flare starter onto a Reshizard and then welder the following turn, you can hit 300 and go through anything. So you can one shot ADPs instantly. The reason this deck did so good is that uh, in the Chill series uh, on October October 8th, we had Fernando Cifuentes putting this on the map, getting first place with a one, uh, yeah, with an eight one one score. Very very nice. And uh, this is also popping up more and more. I've seen in uh, the Limitless TCG weeklies, we've seen that uh, yeah, Eric B from Sweden also got ninth uh, out of like uh, a lot of players. How many players were there in that weekly too? I think uh, 141. 
So very respectable deck. I could be uh, missing a, a couple of other people here. We have yeah, uh, yeah Fernando Cifuentes. I hopefully pronounced that correctly. Also did well at Hexter Tournament number 17. So a very nice deck. It is all focused on uh, getting energies onto your big uh, Charizards here. If you like Charizards, this is the deck for you. You can heal off with Great Potion, have a Hyper Potion at your disposal as well, as well as Melulana. You could be healing like uh, 270 damage. And seeing as you also run Heat, Fire Energies and Big Charms, you're going to have a very tanky Pokemon that is not going to be going down easily. Very great matchup spread uh, because you can uh, do very well against ADP, but you also punish Lucario Melmetalization in the process which is awesome and uh, this list can also do some nasty things with green you can get your reset stamp and power plants simultaneously thanks to green's exploration since we're not running any pokemon with abilities and this also doesn't have like weak hp pokemon uh, like bench shitters for instance the Eject or crobat on the bench for adp uh, players to punish so uh, i do love this deck it's uh, still a very skillful deck because you need to know what you can get with your green sometimes you need to have a tool scrapper uh, sometimes you need your reset stamp sometimes you want to have your one scoop up net to get rid of a Volcanion, so uh, the opponent has to go through two big tag team GXs. And with the team Yael Grunt, you can also get rid of energies and make it very hard for the opponent to respond. So, this deck on the number 10 spot. What else are we going to talk about? Uh, we're going to be talking about the Sidewai Goons or Altaria Goons. I'm actually going to be cheating a little bit here because we have maybe like two archetypes here. We have Obstagoon as well as Altaria Obstagoon. We're going to start with the Sidewai first because that came around first. This is an archetype you always see popping up in tournaments. Uh, let's just take a look at here the biggest uh, placement for the Sidewai. Yeah, and the Limitless <laughs> weekly tournament, it didn't do that well. Maybe in the first one. Yeah, in the first one we have Sebastian L here, uh, 12th place with this kind of a deck out of like, uh, I think also 100 players. Yeah, oh, 160 players. So. This deck is very respectable. Uh, also gonna check out the Hexter tournaments here. If we see any of the Goon squads here, uh, the last couple of Hexter tournaments going around, we don't see any of them. They're not too popular. So that's why they're only ranked number nine, but they could uh, potentially win an entire tournament all by themselves. Oh yeah, the Sidewai uh, Obstagoon also popping up in Atlas Mini number seven by Joshua Frink here. So very nice to see that this deck has some placements. The reason why it is so good is because it cannot be hit by V Pokemon as well as GXs and seeing as the format is filled with them, thanks to ADP keeping one prizers in check, uh, this deck is popping up uh, as a counter. So it's an anti-meta deck. Obstagoon counters big, uh, big basic decks completely. Think about Picaram, think about Baby Blacephalon, think about Mewtwo or think about ADP Zation. Still all of these decks are in the format. Galarian Obstagoon, uh, just make sure you uh, have an uh, answer against it. So you just use that attack, announce Obstruct, and if this is the only Pokemon in play, the opponent will have a hard time scratching their head. How do I get rid of that Obstagoon? Same story for the Sidewai. If they don't have one prize Pokemon, they're pretty much screwed. So that's why uh, this is the strength of this deck. You rely on a big Jirachi package with Rosa to get your stuff out. The big Parasol also protects you from energy discard effects on a certain Pokemon, maybe radiating heat on uh, Santa Scorch. Maybe there are other Pokemon discarding energies, for instance, Lucario Melmetalization, if they use their GX move at the fullest. Yeah, you definitely want to protect that. I uh, do love the fact that there is a couple of weak guard energies in here. Otherwise, the Volcanion will be like insane to say the least. So Volcanion uh, will be going through your Decidueyes very quickly. So that's why you need the weak guard energies. But as soon as you get rid of all the opponents, one prize Pokemon, Decidueye is just stalling it out and you automatically win. People will scoop mark my words. Uh, the, the power of Turfville Stadium is also very nice to find your stage one and stage two Pokemon. And uh, yeah, there's only a small package of Obstagoon in here. Maybe you can increase that further, but this is uh, nice as it is. So as mentioned here, three Wii Guards, one Darkness, and then five regular Grass Energies. Definitely take a screenshot at all of these decks so you can try them out for yourself. Also, I was talking about here on the number 9 spot, we're also going to be taking a look at Altaria Obstagoon. This is all these decks I've playtested before on the channel, so if you want to see how they do, definitely check out those videos. Uh, go check out the playlist of battle videos and you'll see any every single deck you see here in action. Uh, this is a more focused on Obstagoon, like a very tick line, as well as Altaria. The good news is that you can snipe with Headbutt, Tantrum, Galarian, Zigzagoon, Pinks. And uh, this guy is very easy to get out because it's a stage 1, a champion's pet card nevertheless. Very very nice, only attack, only needing a twin energy to start attacking. And uh, same scenario here, big parasol for energy discard effects. And uh, you also need the big charm for more HP, otherwise your Altaria will get one-shotted by Volcanion. And Volcanion seems to be like very popular nowadays. We've seen it in Greensart, we're gonna see 
effective and Santa Scourge later down the line. So this runs three dark as energies, four twins, one hiding dark and one capture. You can change it uh, up to your liking, but this is uh, the list I'm uh, very comfortable of playing with. So Altari Obstagoon or the Sidua Obstagoon on the number nine spot. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna cancel this. Just gonna do it like that. Okay, number eight. Can you guess it? Can you guess it? It is. Intellion V Max. Intellion V Max was uh, very successful during the first few phases of Darkness Ablaze when it got revealed. Actually, released when people started testing it out. You have a good matchup against ADP because uh, of that Hydro Snipe and Energy Denial with Crushing Hammers, uh, as well as the uh, Team Yaw Grunt. If you can loop those in combination, it's gonna be awesome. You can loop that thanks to Mewtwo Mind Report. So, with Scoop Up Nets, that is possible. And uh, this is just a, a more improved version of uh, something like. Uh, Dracapult VMAX. Dracapult VMAX smacked in the face by Eternus VMAX. This is like 160 on the active and 60 to one of the opponent's bench Pokemon. Nobody is playing Mew from Unbroken Bonds to protect their bench anymore, so you can just safely use Inteleon VMAX. The good news is like uh, 160 times 2 is 320, which means it can also one-hit KO Santa Scorch VMAX, a very popular archetype. You can snipe around, you can have energy denial, you can even have an answer against uh, the Eternus matches with a uh, Resolute Blade, although clever Eternus players will not over bench, but Resolute Blade smacks 50 damage for every one of the opponent's bench Pokemon could be very huge and of course you rely on Frost Mod to accelerate the energies. I do love the fact you can use Dimension Breed getting rid of special energies, you can use Crushing Hammer if they work your way that's gonna be busted and you can also use Team Yagrant and the attack of uh, the uh, Antelion VMAX. Love this list a lot, 10 energies in here, you can get some of them back with Training Court if it stays in play and uh, you can also use Capacious Bucket to find your Water Energy. So. Very much focused on Inteleon VMAX. If you're worried about the Decidueye, yeah, there's not a lot of the Decidueye answers in here. You could be running something like Suicune. I've seen that working out. This also, this goes to any effects of the opponent's Pokemon. So, uh, Kaldeo can attack once, but it's weak to grass. So, it's better against Altaria, by the way. You have an answer with Kaldeo. And uh, we'll see. Yeah, this is still a very nice uh, deck indeed. Next up, you can never, ever, ever guess what the number, number seven spot is. I'm gonna tell you, it's Speakerom of all places. We had Pedro Torres doing really well with it at the weekly, um, yeah, the weekly tournaments of Limitless. I think the second one he won. So Pedro Torres, uh, a Spanish player, is uh, known all across the world. I even played against him uh, as well a couple of times at tournaments before. Uh, you can see that uh, when checking out the playlist of the streams on my channel. And uh, Picaram also, uh, you should give uh, huge respect to Azul Garcia Grigo GG, Azul GG getting first place and Hexter tournament number 17 with 100 players. So back to back wins for Picaram. Picaram is not going anywhere. It lost Electro Power, it lost Power Plant, uh, not Power Plant, uh, Thunder Mountain of all things, but it's still alive and kicking. Instead of going hyper aggressively with Electro Powers, you now slow the opponent down with Crushing Hammer. Fike of old late game is busted. I've seen plays like uh, Boss Zorus with Vikavolt and then slowly grinding it out for your last prize cards. You also still have Tag Ball GX. Being able to slap 170 to one of the opponent's bench Pokemon is huge. You have a, a reasonable matchup against ADP because you're way faster. Seeing a first turn full blitz happening is like uh, almost happening every single, single, single time because of energy switch. Tapu Koko Prism Star and all that good magical stuff here. You can use the Dene GX as well as Crobat V as well as a research. So there's a lot of good things to love about Picaram. Also, late game reset stamp with, of course, the tandem shock of Raichu Raichu has won countless amounts of games because putting the opponent to a low hand size while being able to use the tandem shock and getting, of course, that paralyzation side effect with Raichu and Alolan Raichu tag team jacks is way too good. The Calyx well also is in here to protect yourself against something like a sticking... Um, uh, what is it? The black market, for instance, or getting rid of uh, giant hearts or anything for that matter, Kyrax well protects you against that, and uh, there's also Eldegos to get back your stuff. Do love the fact you can also rely on Electrify if you see like, oh, I don't get the first turn full blitz, just rely on Electrify and you can accelerate uh, energies onto your Picaram with that. Picaram, on the uh, other hand, is gonna be fantastic for you to just uh, get first turn aggression off, and uh, yeah, this is still very, very bonkers. The Big Charm also protects you, funny enough, because you have resistance to metal with the Big Charm, the uh, Zacian players cannot one-hit KO your Picaram, and that's gonna be very, very huge uh, because they will need to two-shot while you are way quicker and you can get additional prize cards thanks to Tag Bolt GX. Crushing Hammers, on the other hand, also slows down stuff like Eternus, stuff like ADP Zation, so uh, that's gonna be fantastic. Picaram still a, a huge threat in the metagame. Uh, I'm also gonna talk about uh, the next deck up here, and that's probably gonna be my personal deck, my personal favorite deck. 
Ah, uh, yeah, you could have guessed it already. It's Blounce. Have a lot of ways you can play Blounce. You can play it with the energy spinners, uh, as seen in this build. But recently, I'm a bigger fan of the build I, I, I'm using right now for the Players' Cup. So I'm giving you my personal information right here. So this is going to be Blacephalon with Beastbringers. Yeah, I've talked about a lot of tag teams before. We see that Mewtwo is still a thing, Pikaram is still a thing, uh, Reshizard is still a thing. So Beastbringer, fantastic, definitely against ADP because what Blanc typically wants to do is knock out a big tag team and then use Cramoran to switch up and then bam, knock out of the Dene GX. So this deck is very nice. You rely on Zation to draw cards, uh, you rely on Crobat to draw cards or a Corio to draw cards, the Dene to draw cards. I know these are all two prized Pokemon, but uh, trust, my, uh, trust me on my words is that I've tested this list a lot and it works out pretty well. You might be thinking one energy retrieval, that's very mediocre, uh, but we still have 16 physical copies of the fire energy thrown in here. So energies won't be a problem with four copies of Giant Heart and even having the access to the Marshadow is awesome. You can use Giant Heart and then it's the opponent's turn if you're Giant Heart sticks, you can use that Giant Heart, use Marshadow to get rid of it and place down another Giant Heart to actually get four energies in the same turn. I know it's not as explosive as it was, otherwise it would be definitely in my top three. Uh, because we've lost a Heat Factory, we've lost uh, the um, Fiery Flint, we even lose, uh, lost Blacephalon GX, which was a huge game changer. So that's why I'm still opted to go for Beastbringers, otherwise you need to like uh, get three huge KOs and uh, in this uh, scenario it uh, is better. I also put one Galarian Zigzagoon in here because I think the Eternus matchup is still very hard. They can use Spirit Tomb to knock out your Oracorio at one point, uh, like in the third uh, phase of the game, which is very annoying. That's why the Zigzagoon will make sure with one scoop up net you can use Cramorant to one hit KO a Crobat V on their bench. So that's gonna help out a lot. Uh, no more Palpat, we're relying on Mewtwo. Uh, Mewtwo with Scoop Up Net can get Welders or even the one copy of the Boss's Orders. I've uh, used Boss's Orders a bazillion amount of times to win games. People don't expect the Boss's Orders. You can just Welder on the bench on your Blacephalon. If you don't have enough energies to one hit KO it, let's stay on the bench, chilling it out. They could boss orders, that could be very sad. But on the other hand, you don't lose a bazillion amount of energies while not getting a one hit KO. So the boss orders can help out with that so you can get your last prize cards on another VMAX or uh, anything else for that matter. So this is a very nice build and uh, I'm a huge fan of Blasophilon. I'm using this personally for the Players' Cup grind. Definitely do so as well. It's very, very fun. Okay, next up, we're gonna be talking about the top five. And I actually was thinking back and forth here, what do I place on the number five spot? Uh, also talking about Blacephalon here, uh, uh, before we go to the number five spot, I'm gonna be checking out, there's still a lot of people playing Blacephalon. We have uh, Luigi Lira, uh, sixth placement for the uh, Limitless TCG Weekly number two. Uh, you also have the second place for uh, HBJ Trevo, uh, from, yeah, also getting second place in the first weekly tournament of Limitless, also seeing here uh, Leviathan 15, uh, also getting fifth place with Blacephalon. I think all these Blacephalon run a lot of energies, I'm gonna check them out very quickly. Uh, there's 17 energies, 14 energies and lots of retrieval. So you need more energies than ever before because of the V maxes uh, being everywhere. But Blacephalon seems to be popping up in almost every single tournament. We've seen it before like in Chill the series, in the Hexer TCG series. Blacephalon is still a threat, not winning anything major uh, as of late but definitely worth exploring nevertheless. If you can get it consistent enough, it's the best deck in format, but unfortunately, yeah, sometimes it'll suffer on bricks like crazy, or you can get donked. Now, number five, I'm going to be putting that to Lucario Melmetal. Uh, if I can find it, uh, Luke Metal. Yeah, here it is. Luke Metalization. I actually was doubting to put this on the number four spot, but it has dropped down significantly in the last couple of weeks. It was very great uh, because you have like that answer against like fire decks, Sent to Scorch for instance, Reshizar decks and all that. So Bronzong, very nice uh, checking yourself against the fire matchup. Zamazenta, great against VMAXs, for instance, Eternatus VMAX, as well as the Sent to Scorch VMAX, you cannot get hit by those thanks to that Dauntless Shield ability. And uh, this is all relying on that uh, GX move, Full Metal Wall GX. This has a great matchup against ADP Zation, that's why People were playing this. You can use full metal wall jacks and out of nowhere for the rest of the game, all your metal type Pokemon receive 30 less damage. In combination with the metal goggles, metal goggles also protects you against snipe damage from Galarian Zigzagoons, by the way, they will need to slap like uh, a lot more damage. You, you receive 60 less damage on all your metal types. That is insane. So that means this uh, will need to be hit by 280 damage in order to get knocked out. So that's why you have the upper hand against ADP Zation. 
What else is cool about this list is that you can use Cynthia Catlin to get uh, some of your Melolanas. There's two Melolanas in here, so that can heal off a lot of damage. I've also seen, uh, you might think, like, you don't have an answer against the Sejuai Obstagoon. But we do have an answer. With Bronzong, you are an evolution Pokemon, and the evolution Pokemon can get rid of uh, the Obstagoon for sure. Definitely considering the fact that if you have a Metal Goggles on here and you use full Metal Wall GX, uh, this is a very, very tanky Pokemon. And you also confuse the uh, Obstruct Obstagoon, which is awesome. Now we're going to talk about the Gluk Metalization. Who put this on the map? We have here Gabe Shibway. Atlas Mini, first place winning list. Uh, I don't know if this is the exact same list, but Lucario Mel Metal uh, is definitely a thing. We have Lucas O and Weekly Tournament of Limitless getting first, actually not first place, sixth place. We have Hexter Tournaments going around. Gabriel Smart, uh, the number 15, Hexter Tournament 15, first place. So Lucario Mel Metal uh, is very good, but lately people are playing more and more Welder decks just to counter this like at one point the meta was like a 50 percent share for like uh lucario mel metalization and adp zation so that was insane so people are playing more and more welder decks uh we've seen mewtwo welder popping up more we've seen santa scorch popping up more so that's uh, what put this deck down but a very tanky heal the archetype you can heal a lot of damage you can uh, have an answer against fire decks you have an answer against eternus it's a good deck all around and uh, yeah it's a very probably the most defensive deck out there okay next up are you ready number four yeah it's another tag team believe it or not it's going to be mew mew and uh, i'm actually going to cheat a little bit here and mew mew has actually two archetypes that i want to showcase today uh the best option is probably the welder build there's no way around it mewtwo welder is the best way to be playing uh mewtwo welder Okay, uh, yeah, Mewtwo just uh, with Welder, you can use the attacks here. 300 damage on the second turn. I've seen uh, crazier things happening, like you go first, attach, pass, then you you can use Welder and ban 300 on the first turn, knocking out ADP instantly. So you also have ways to just deal with uh, Zacian. You can use Victini or Volcanion, and you also have Galarian Zigzagoon Pings, which means uh, the Snipe Shot of Venom Shot actually goes to 180, so that means you can one-shot Crobat Vs. You also have, if you have some damage on your Mewtwo, you can resort to Darkest Tornado GX, being able to one-hit KO anything in the game. If you think, wow, I'm a little bit slow, you can use Iron Roll GX, putting the opponent like they cannot attack during the next turn. That means you have a little bit more time on your hands. Maybe you have some uh, Venom Shot material ready for next turn. Who knows? But this deck has it all. The Horror Psychic Energy is necessary because that means if they hit into you, they get two damage counters on them. Very great because you slap 300, you want to get more damage output because uh, you need to get the one-hit KOs on VMAXs. Unfortunately, that's not possible, but if they hit into you, they get two damage counters and you can finish that up with, of course, Zigzagoon Pings as well. Uh, there's no scoop up nuts in here, so your Zigzagoon Ping is probably only necessary for the Venom Shot, but you never know how you can get some more uh, damage across the field. Sometimes it will be necessary to get like uh, more damage output, for instance, if you attack with Victini, you might need that 10 damage. Maybe you're using the Flare Strike or maybe something else that where you need that 10 extra damage to one hit KO a Pokemon at one point. So you definitely need to find your Welders, Giant Heart. There's a lot of Poke Gears in here. In the past, people ran Jirachi, uh, Stellar Wish to find your Welders. This is probably the better build because Let's face it, if you're running baby Jirachi, then the ADP players will just knock out Mewtwo and they knock out the Jirachi and that's game. And that's something you don't want. You do run Volcanion, but it will help you out and mark my words. Reset Stamp also very good against uh, with your Mewtwo. Uh, unfortunately, we lost Turbo Strike, uh, Solgaleo, but it's still a very good deck nevertheless. Seeing as, uh, as of some results, we're gonna see uh, weekly tournaments here from the Limitless. There is a, a fourth place, Enter the Ninja is uh, from, I think it was Italy that actually got fourth place uh, thanks to like playing Mewtwo Welder. We've seen in the Atlas uh, tournament, were there any Mewtwo's? Definitely Mewtwo's here. We see Mewtwo here with uh, Gonzalo Pereira, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, we also see in the Chill TCG tournaments, Mewtwo uh, Welder Box again, Marco Cifuentes. So lots of people playing Mewtwo still and the Hexer tournaments as well. Mewtwo seems no signs of slowing down ever since Henry Brand will, won the World Championship with it. That was even a long time ago because uh, right now like the World Championships have been cancelled. We have to wait for 2021. But nevertheless, Mewtwo is very good. And there's also a very roguish archetype for Mewtwo, and that's the Mewtwo list with Frozma. This is winning a lot less tournaments, but I uh, thought I would showcase it here in this video so you guys know that you can also play Mewtwo a whole different way. You use Frozma to put energies onto your uh, Frozma itself or Keldeo. 
and then you can use the attack here, a Rocket Splash, 60 damage for every energy you decide to put back in the deck. With Viridian Forest and a huge amount of draw with the Danny and Crobat, out of nowhere, Mewtwo can one hit KO anything in the game. This list is a little bit weaker against Eternatus V Max because they can one hit KO you very easily. Like they set up on the bench very nice and safely, and then out of nowhere, Boss Zord's Mewtwo, and then you say, like, ah. Oh, Dang it. <laughs> also, putting some energy switches in this list might not be a bad idea because as soon as they knock you out, you actually need two turns to attack. You could resort to the attack Star Stream of Starmie Jags by using it uh, for one energy on Mewtwo, but uh, it's very clunky nevertheless, so I would prefer the Welder build. Now, to the top three, and I'm 100% sure that these are the top three. There's no way around it. Thanks to tournament results, we see. We're going to be uh, seeing Santa Scorch, we're going to be talking about the, uh, the regular list, and now we're going to be talking about the Magneton list. So, here is the regular version, this is just uh, Santa Scorch VMAX. Uh, I think people are now running less Heat Fire energies and more regular Fire energies, but this is the build I uh, was playing with, so with uh, the Wondrous Labyrinth, slowing the opponent down, and Santa Scorch dishes out more damage depending on how many energies you have onto your Santa Scorch. So with, of course, uh, Flare Starter, I do suggest playing more physical copies of the... Uh, Volcanian because the updated lists are, are a little bit more consistent, but this heals, which is awesome. You can heal a Hyper Potion, you can use Mellow Lana, so that can also be a, a, a nice way because with more HP, like with uh, the Heat Fire Energy and the Big Charm, you might even out, uh, yeah, HP, or actually outlift certain archetypes. What else? Fion here is very nice to just get a huge threat in the active slot if the opponent just decides, oh, I cannot attack, let's, yeah, you can have a Jirachi, that's something you don't want. You want to be hunting on those uh, two prize Pokemon or three prize Pokemon with your big HP Santa Scorch V Max. What else is awesome in this list is like Reset Stamp at the correct time. Like if there's a Sentence Scorch with like seven energy staring you down in the face and you use Reset Stamp, you automatically almost always win unless they draw out of it. And uh, with Balls Doors, you can take down any threat. So I'm a big fan of Sentence Scorch VMAX. It's seen more and more success. Uh, definitely with Tord Reckliff playing this crazy greens list with Magneton. I don't know if you know what Magneton does, but it can let uh, you blow it up. The opponent takes a prize card, very similar to like Miss Magius, and they ban that card for no reason. <laughs> now you can use Magneton, you can find yourself three supporters, and that will always be Lieutenant Surge's strategy. You blow yourself up, so you're behind in prize cards, allowing you to play two more supporters after playing Lieutenant Surge's strategy. And that could be like Double Welder. Imagine Double Welder on the Santa Scorch and attach of turn out of nowhere. Santa Scorch will be one hit in KOing anything in the game or you can use a welder and a boss's orders very nice or a welder and a green simultaneously all thanks to the power of lieutenant surge's strategy this is a uh, torts uh, list that he's playing right now you can you know torp reckliff the most uh, skillful player uh, like uh, as of late there's not the most skillful one but at least one of the most skillful players it's his name is always out there creating archetypes he also put like uh, a reshazard like with victini prism star on the map by uh, getting fourth place at the world championships he won the malmo regionals uh, he is just a skillful player also thinking about uh, the internationals i think he won like three or four of them it's insane anyhow the, he decided to just uh, play sand scorch with magneton and that's his preferred way to playing it because you can use uh, abuse lieutenant surge strategy and then welder not only are you giving up prize cards you can then reset stamp and have a Santa scorch with a ton of energy staring down at the opponent then you can just use boss's orders and take your prize cards that way very very funky indeed so uh, what else can we say about this list is that there's one cramorin in here sometimes you just want to clean up with a spit shot just like you would with blossophilon decks okay and now the number two spot can you guess it what it is okay first things first uh we still need to talk about some results for the Santa scorch list let's see here weekly number two the first Sand Scorch popping up is only 13th place, which uh, Shoro Marmoda. So not too funky here. Picaram actually took over that tournament. What else here? Sand Scorch first place winning list uh, at Givni. I know if I pronounced that correctly. It's uh, a TCG username for with the weekly tournaments of Limitless TCG. First place for a United States player here. Sand Scorch. Uh, next up, the Atlas Mini. Do we see some Sand Scorch love here? Yeah, Sand Scorch ninth place with Felipe Eduardo. Kibilos Diaz. <laughs> yeah, my pronunciation, if I pronounce that incorrectly, I'm sorry for that. Uh, what else here? Santa Scorches in the house. Yeah, Santa Scorch also sees more success because of the popularity that Luke Mar Lucario Melmetalization had. So Santa Scorch definitely doing well. Uh, we've seen it popping up here and there, and uh, it's still a very powerful deck because the more energies that are on there, the better it becomes. And we also have Yusei. 
Sek Yusuki Saiki with Sensei Score V Max with nine tails. And the Hexer Tournament number 17, third place, as well as fourth place, Sensei Score V Max, the regular build. And then uh, Sensei Score V Max with Green's build, eighth place. So that tournament was very well focused on Sensei Score V Max. Now, the moment of truth. This is the second place. Uh, the top two lists here is Eternus. Eternus is has been promoted ever since Darkness of Blaze and it uh, is very good. It's very consistent. You can just, the only thing you need at the first turn is like Eternatus and Attachment of the turn and then you're good to go. Eternatus slaps a maximum damage output of 270 uh, if you can get your full bench of eight Darkness Pokemon. Because of the ability, you can have up to eight Darkness Pokemon and then you can just put, them, put some Spirit Tombs there, put a Hoopa there, put some Zigzagoon Pings here. So Eternus VMAX can one hit any anything in the game thanks to Zigzagoon and the Scoop Up Nets. It, uh, from turn 2 to 70 or more is insane. You uh, one hit KO any tag team that comes your path. You can use bosses or just on the uh, decks, one price decks that rely on the Denny and all that good stuff. Eternus VMAX is nowhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How can I promote this even further? Very consistent, does very well at almost every tournament. It is nice to build because with Crobat you can draw cards, you have research to draw cards. The only thing that matters for you is just filling up your bench. Why is Sableye V in here? That's respecting uh, the Zamazenta V, of course. It's still uh, being put in a lot of metal decks out there. So you need an out against that. Otherwise, you, Spiritomb doesn't probably do the job. Even though you have to, it's still not doing the job. And uh, yeah, we also have Hiding Dark Energy so you can retreat as well as switches because some Mewtwo players do love <laughs> playing a little muck to just use that nasty GX move of that and then poison you and trap you and all that. Don't want to see that. You have some switches in here. Okay. Who is playing Eternus here? So, uh, Limitless ECG weekly number one, third and fourth place filled up by Eternus. Weekly uh, tournament number two, a little bit less Eternus. Uh, on the, only on the 10th spot here, we see Swiss Flar Fiato <laughs> uh, playing Eternus. And what else can we see here? Eternus being played in Atlas Mini, seven and eight spot uh, respectively. The Chill TCG series, uh, we do see Eternus is not in here. Wow, that's crazy. Like nobody uh, decided to play that. And then we have Eternus. Yeah, Eternus seems to be like, in certain tournaments is very dominant and other tournaments is not. A Hexer TCG tournament number 16. Uh, people playing Eternus VMAX with Toxic Croak. It's a build I haven't built just yet. Maybe we should try that out on the channel very shortly. And then on Hexer tournament number 17. Lots of fire decks to be honest. Eternus uh, is probably gonna be making a comeback, but I, thanks to uh, the amount of tournaments that have been uh, successful with Eternus, I putting is uh, yeah on the number two spot. You can be on a different agreement on that, but I still think Eternus will prove itself worthy. So now the number one spot. Can you guess it? Yeah, there's no surprise here. ADP Zation. Ah, uh, people want to be banning ADP, and this is actually the all-around list having answers against everything. The Rilladon, oh, you're having problems against the Sigiwai, no problem, the Rilladon. You're having problems against Upsagoon, well, we have Mawal, no problem, just put some stuff on the bench, use boss's orders and win. This list is insane. The only thing you need to do is like, attach one energy on the ADP and you're, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> one fourth of the way of winning the game because afterwards you use Alter Creation Jacks, turn three, you boss's orders KO something, turn four, you boss's orders KO something, and you win the game, that's the best deck in the format. You can say whatever you want about this list. People could play around about thanks to Mawal GX with the Captivating Wink. You automatically will put down Pokemon that you don't want and they will knock it out. Zamazenta having an out against uh, Santa Scorch VMAX as well as Eternus VMAX. And uh, you have Eldegos to get your bosses orders back in the late game. And Crushing Hammers, I, I prefer this kind of a way because that means you have a better out against Eternus as well as in the mirror match. So that's what you want to see here, right? And now with energy switches and all that, you can even get an Ultra Creation Jacks up on the first turn going second. You just saucer onto Zation, you energy switch it onto your ADP, attach in the middle of the turn is water type energy. Easy to find that thanks to energy spinner and off you go. On the first turn, like let's say you go first, no problem, you use Quick Ball, you can use Dedane. Otherwise, another Quick Ball, use Crobat. Find your Salvization, slap down the Zation, uh, find your ADP, attach of the turn and then Entrepid Sword. You see half your deck on the first turn. This deck is insane. People want it banned so badly, but we still have answers. Green's Reshazard has a good matchup, Lucario Malmetalization has a good matchup, even both Cephalon has a good matchup and Mewtwo as well. Why do people want this banned? Because as soon as you uh, have one mistake in the game, this deck will win automatically. That's how fast it goes. If you say, oh, I'm with the attachment for a, a very powerful attack in my attacker, oh, I'm with Welder or whatever, you automatically lose because this deck thrives on people having, of course, dead hands and 
not getting the ideal start. So that's why I'm putting this on the number one spot. People, you see it everywhere. Weekly number two tournament, uh, second place, uh, Vitor Lugan from Brazil uh, with ADPization. Weekly tournament number one from the uh, yeah Limitless TCG here. We see ADPization popping up here at number eight. Uh, Atlas Mini ADPizations, yeah, of course there are ADPizations, there's ADPizations everywhere. 10th place for Joel Luis Morera, uh, where they are Chill Series TCG, uh, let's see here, ADPizations, 6th spot, Gabriel Baptista, so lots of ADPizations, that's almost in every single top 8 here. Tony Vorges with the Hexer Tournament number 15 uh, ADPization. Actually, that was not ADP station, that was ADP with Charizard and Braxton. So, ADP as a card itself is just busted. Fifth place, Augusto Brubergrero. <laughs> yeah, ADP station again. Hexer tournament number 16. ADP station popping up in the fifth slot as well as the first slot. So, as well as the third slot. Yeah, why not? Hexer TCG just taking over. ADP station everywhere. So, this is the best deck in the format. You can change your build up a little bit. And um, I will also leave some links in the description below so you can check out uh, some of these sites that I uh, take a look at while making this video. So hopefully you guys enjoy this top 10 of the best decks in the current format. If you have uh, yeah, suggestions for more videos, be sure to put them in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to mouse the like button as always. It helps out the channel more than you would possibly think. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. You get the competitive TCG information you want every single week. So why not do that, right? Also, a uh, big shout out to my sponsors, PotownStore.com for your TCGO code card needs. If you need a Zation promo code, if you need some boosters, they have it all. Definitely check them out, PotownStore.com. And then we also have CardMarket.com for the European players out there. European players, you can buy and sell cards on that platform. And uh, here is a coupon code for 5 euros for the person that claims this. It's only for one person, but if you claim it, you get a 5 euro coupon code starting your adventure on Card Market. And uh, you can buy, it's very cheap prices to be honest. So let's say, oh, I need a Derodon for my ADP deck. I don't have one, just want to tech against the CGY, you never know. You can buy it, just put coupon code, boom, and you're off. Uh, so uh, definitely check out my sponsors. They help me out a ton. And you guys help me out a ton as well by sharing the video and liking it and all that good stuff. I will see you guys in the next video very shortly. Thanks again for tuning in and all the best for the rest of the Player Cup uh, until it lasts. So hopefully you guys will be in the top 256 with these decks. See you guys later. Peace out.